Well, hello everyone. I don't know who will be tuning in. I hope some people will be joining me and I know some of you will be watching the re this recording. So wherever you are, whenever it is, I wanna say a warm hello and let you know that I'm here in Massachusetts. It's a few days before Christmas and I thought it would be a wonderful time to share a famous Christmas poem with you. So one of the things that we'll be doing now is reading a famous poem by Clement C. Moore. Clement C. Moore, and it's called Twas the Night Before Christmas. All right, so if you can go to my Facebook page or my Twitter account, I've shared a link to a copy of this poem. So you can open that up and follow along. There are different versions of this poem and um, hopefully you can find the version that I'm reading. The link that I shared is on gutenberg.org. This is the Project Gutenberg. So I'm hoping that some of you will be joining me and we can read along together. I'm gonna wait just another minute or so to see who shows up, but you can use the recording later for listening practice. You could also do pronunciation practice, listen, repeat, one of the wonderful things about using poems is that they help you feel the rhythm of the language. So this story, this famous Christmas story, is told in rhyme. And I hope that as you listen, you enjoy just the sound of the story. It's a story that's read to children at this time of the year. Of course, the best time to read it is on Christmas Eve because the story is Twas the Night Before Christmas, but it's a story that could be read um, any time in December as children get very excited for the holidays. It's just one of those famous um, stories. Most everybody has a copy. Of course, you can find copies online too. So I'm waiting to see who will join me. And also I'll let you know that I have a special quiz on Seymour.org. I've shared the link on Facebook and on Twitter and on my community tab on YouTube. And it's a quiz that reviews the vocabulary from this poem. So if you'd like to read the story and then check your understanding of the vocabulary, then click on that link. Go to my free vocabulary classroom on Seymour. Hey there, you're the first to say hello. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, so I was just telling um, everyone about a couple different links that will be very useful. The first link is that gutenberg.org link so you can have a copy, hello to you, of Clement C. Moore's Twas the Night Before Christmas. And um, the other link, hey Mohammed, the other link is the link to seymour.org where I shared a quiz and I review the vocabulary um, that is used in this poem. Now, some of the vocabulary is useful to know, and some of the vocabulary is just useful to know to understand this poem. Twas the Night Before Christmas is very famous here in the US, but I will tell you, it's famous partly because it's been here forever. Hey, is it Hajar and Galina? Hello, everyone. So. Can you guess how old this poem is? <laughs> Twas the night before Christmas should already give you a hint. Twas, T-W-A-S. Twas is a contraction. We don't use this contraction anymore. Hey, is that um, Sisavani? I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing names, but I'm so happy you're here. And um, I just saw another person join us. Uh, is it Macdokian? <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me. I see you. Thank you. Is it I see, it's Castile Bear and Diem? Hi guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Mustafa, Sahan, One Love, One World. Great name. <laughs> Pankaj, Gabriella. Hi guys. The names are going by fast now. I'm so happy everyone's joining me now. Jebayal and Mukesh, Yejan and Yusuf. Vava, hello to all of you. Thank you so much for joining me now. Okay, so again, before I start, um, go to either my Facebook page or my Twitter account. And what you can do is click on the link for your copy of Clement C. Moore's 
Twas the Night Before Christmas, okay? It's on gutenberg.org. This is the original version of the poem. There are many versions online, um, but the one I'll be reading is the original version. I'm sorry, I can't say all the names are scrolling by so fast, but I'm so happy that everyone is joining me. Thank you so much. Oh, and you're from China too. <laughs> I'm sure it's evening time for you. It's um, still in the early morning here in Massachusetts. But so open up your coffee copy if you'd like to read along. Twas the night before Christmas is on gutenberg.org. All right, and then after this live stream, I encourage you to click on the other link that I shared on Facebook and Twitter and my community board. I have a link to seymour.org where I shared a vocabulary quiz. It's free to take and you can see how well you understand the vocabulary in this poem. I'm doing great, is it Khan? I hope you're doing well too. And Leah and Zainab, everyone, thank you. All right, so I'll read this a couple times. You know why? Because the first time, I bet you'll have some questions about the vocabulary. And then I want to read once more without stopping so you can fully enjoy the rhythm and the rhyme of, the, of this poem. It's a story told in rhyme. So poems um, help you develop that sense of rhythm for the English language. Hey, Carlos, glad you're here. All right, guys, so this poem is famous and it's been around for over 100 years. In fact, I think it's closer to 200 years old. Clement C. Moore wrote this close to Christmas time a couple hundred years ago, and he wrote it for his family. He was a father. And as I understand, he was just inspired one evening out in the snow and he was taking a sleigh ride and he felt inspired to write a Christmas poem for his children. So he went home and he wrote it down and then as a gift for his family, especially for his children, he read the poem on Christmas Eve. And somehow the poem got out, it was published, it was shared. Clement C. Moore didn't get credit right away, but eventually he claimed authorship. And the poem has been translated into other languages, but of course we'll read it in English today. And there have been different versions published. Because it was written so long ago, you'll feel that the language is different from what we use today. So that's partly why I'll need to stop and give some explanations, okay? All right, so it was the night before Christmas by Clement C. Moore. Okay, I hope some of you have opened your copy on gutenberg.org. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Okay, question for you. Who is St. Nicholas? I hope some of you know the answer to that. St. Nicholas is another name for who? <laughs> I'm waiting for someone to put the answer in the comments. Who is St. Nicholas? Not a creature was stirring. You might think of stir as like stirring soup or stirring stew, but stir has another, um, yes, Christina got it, Santa and Anne. Mm -hmm. St. Nicholas is Santa Claus. Stirring has a second meaning and it means just to move. So if not a creature was stirring, it means Everything was silent and peaceful in the house. No one was even moving. All was quiet. Everyone was sleeping. Stockings, I hope you see my stockings back there. Stockings, of course, ladies wear stockings on their legs, um, but these Christmas stockings are very big. They're oversized, and that's where we put Christmas gifts, okay? All right, and I'm not gonna show pictures because I'll be a little cautious. Um, this poem is public domain, meaning it's free for everyone and um, I can share it with you, but I'm not sure about the illustrations, so I apologize. I'm not going to show the pictures just in case. All right. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And mama in her kerchief, 
and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. The children were nestled, nestled, nestled. If you look inside the word nestled, there's the word nest. Birds are in a nest, right? And why do they have that nest? To stay warm and protected and cozy and comfortable. So if the children are nestled in their beds, they're warm, they're protected and comfortable. Nestled and snug are basically the same here. They're nestled in their beds, they're snug in their beds. Snug is a word we can use today. Snug is cozy and comfortable. But nestled is, um, they're in a place that's protected and snug is warm and cozy and comfortable. Okay, mama in her kerchief. Not many people wear a kerchief here in the US, but a kerchief um, is like a cloth, a bandana over the head. Back in you know the 1800s, they didn't have modern heating like we do today. I'm sure it was quite cold. Um, he, Clement Seymour lived in New York, as I recall. I'm sure it was chilly. They had to cover their heads when they went to sleep at night. They were under warm blankets, but um, the mama, the mother put on a kerchief and he was in a cap, so they covered their heads at night to stay warm. Had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. Basically, they just, you know, they put their heads down and they were calm and sleeping and relaxed for a long winter's nap, a long night of sleep. When out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. Okay, there could be a lot of vocabulary there. Out on the lawn, out on the yard, outside, there arose such a clatter, so this big sound came up. He sprang from the bed, he jumped, and he went to the window like a flash, right? Like lightning, quick. He tore open the shutters, he ripped them open, not literally, but he opened it quickly, very quickly. The shutters are those things that cover the windows that open up. He opened the shutters and he looked outside and guess what he saw? I'm sure you know who he saw. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eye should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Okay. It's a beautiful winter night. The moon is shining down on the new fallen snow and it gave a luster. Luster is the shine, right? New fallen snow under the moon, it, it's shiny and bright. Okay, you can imagine how beautiful that winter scene is. There's a miniature sleigh. Mini miniature is tiny. Right? So um, I see Safu saying, this is hard to understand. Again, if you can go to gutenberg.org, you can open up your copy, okay? But I'll try to explain the key vocabulary so you can basically follow along. Miniature means very small, very tiny. Miniature has a few different pronunciations. Some people say miniature, some people say miniature but it just means very small. So from a distance, the sleigh and the reindeer looked very small. With a lively old driver, with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer, now Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Santa Claus rides in a sleigh, right? The reindeer pulled them, so Santa's giving orders. He's telling him, uh, telling his reindeer to go, get me up to the roof, okay? 
Um, the names of the reindeer are famous. Children learn them mainly through this story and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. We learn the names of Santa's reindeer. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donder, Blitzen. Okay, so rapid than eagles. His reindeer are fast, they are rapid, right? And coursers, don't worry about this word, I'll just explain, these are the reindeer who keep him on course. They're taking him on the path that he needs to go. He whistled and shouted by name. He's telling them to dash away, dash away. Dash is a word you can use. I got a dash now. Dash is going fast, dash. So he's telling his reindeer to go up to the roof. When he goes to a new home, he goes up to the roof. And I hope you know why. How does Santa get into a house? Do some of you know? How does Santa traditionally get into a house? And I'll give you a hint. Okay. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, melt to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. Okay, This is basically saying that Santa takes a sleigh full of toys up to the rooftop, the housetop. And the reindeer don't have feet, they don't have paws. Reindeer are like horses and they have hooves. One hoof, many, four hooves. So all the hooves of the reindeer are on top of the house. They're prancing and pawing, so their hooves are making sounds on the roof, okay? And Santa, or Saint Nicholas, came down the chimney, right? That's how Santa Claus gets in. He comes through the chimney and out the fireplace, okay? Now that must be not such a clean way to come, right? If you actually were to come down and not get hurt, but come down the chimney through the fireplace, how would he come through? He'd be a little dirty, right? <laughs> okay, listen. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. With a bundle of toys he had flung on his back, he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. Santa comes with a big bag, a big sack. Here it's called a pack, and it's full of toys. And as he came out, of course he got dirty with ashes and soot. So after you burn a fire, there are ashes and soot, that black powder, ashes and soot. And that's how his clothes got dirty. In here they say tarnished, okay? Now for the famous description of Santa Claus. Clement C. Moore got his poem, helped us imagine even more what Santa looks like and what Christmas is like and how Santa delivers his gifts. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. <laughs> his eyes twinkled, right? They're shining and happy. He has dimples. Some people have dimples in their cheeks and they were red and rosy. His little mouth was drawn up like a bow. Like, <laughs> I can't quite imitate that. And of course, Santa has a long white beard. Saint Nick, Santa Claus, Father Christmas, Chris Kringle, we have many names for him. Clement C. Moore called him Saint Nick or Saint Nicholas. The stump of his pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. 
We all know Santa Claus to be round and he has a big belly that helps him laugh with the ho, ho, ho. So traditionally, Santa does smoke a pipe. Of course, in modern times, we don't like that image. We don't usually share that image with children today. We like to show them that Santa doesn't smoke, but traditionally Santa had a pipe and he smoked and the smoke went around his head like a wreath. A wreath is a circle. I showed on Twitter, I believe I showed a wreath recently. A Christmas, Christmas wreath is a circle of evergreen branches and we hang them on our doors and on our windows around Christmas time. It's a traditional decoration, okay? I always liked the description that when he laughed, his belly shook like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> he was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Here in this story, they don't necessarily, he does, or Clement C. Moore doesn't really draw a description or paint a picture of Santa as this big booming guy that we, we imagine today. Um, Clement C. Moore describes Santa more as a little elf, but still plump, right? But his eyes twinkled, and when you looked at him, you knew that you had nothing to dread, nothing to fear, dread. Um, in spite of myself, like you didn't, you couldn't help but laugh, right? I had to laugh in spite of myself. I had to laugh and I just couldn't help it, okay? Again, gutenberg.org, guys, look for the link and you can follow along. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. So apparently that's how Santa uses his magic. When it's time to go, he goes, and up he goes the chimney. <laughs> he sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. <laughs> so again, sprang, spring, sprang, sprung. So he jumped into his sleigh, and he gave a whistle, and he made his reindeer start flying away. The down of a thistle, you don't need to learn this, but you do need to understand it now. It just meant a thistle is like a plant, I believe. And so just like a smooth, like not necessarily leaves, but like needles. And you can imagine how smooth it could be to see those needles. And that's how fast and smooth Santa took off from the housetop up into the sky in his sleigh with the reindeer pulling him. And then he goes off to the next house. And of course, traditionally here in the U.S., we say Merry Christmas. Um, Clement C. Moore, at the end of his poem, had St. Nick call out, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Some versions of this poem change that to Merry Christmas for the American audience, okay? So, again, I'm going to tell you that if you want to get a copy, go to gutenberg.org. I've shared the link on Facebook and Twitter and Seymour.org, and also the vocabulary is reviewed on Seymour. It's a free 25 question quiz in my vocabulary classroom. So just join Seymour.org, go into my vocabulary classroom, and you'll see the quiz section, a quiz tab, and you can click to try that and review the vocabulary. Someone asked if Santa is real. Of course he is. If you believe in the magic and the spirit of Christmas, your belief bring, makes him real. So I always believe in the spirit of Christmas, <laughs> okay? I, I see some requests for other topics and grammar, so please put those requests also on Facebook and on the community tab, and I'll take um, a look at those requests and consider what we can do in the coming year. But as promised, I wanna read once more 
because now without interruption, I think you should enjoy the poem. But I'm going to get a different version. I have actually two copies at home. Thanks for the love, Christina. I have two copies. This is a shorter one. This is probably more typical um, of what we would read to young children because the original version of Twas the Night Before Christmas um, has that old fashioned language. It's a little outdated and could be hard to follow. So this one um, takes out that outdated language and also cuts it a bit shorter, okay? How to create a poem. I do have some ideas on how to create a poem and we can talk about that maybe on Facebook or on the community tab because I have shared links before if you guys follow me. Um, every so often I share interesting tips and ideas and things like how to write a poem can come up. I've also covered poetry on Seymour in the past. Um, but let's do as promised, okay? It is going on 10 o'clock and I'd love to read once more before we end and I want to read without interruptions. So this is what you would read to young children, hopefully on Christmas Eve or in the days before Christmas. You ask your children to gather or it could be the bedtime story that you read. And of course, every child loves to hear someone, a mother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, older sibling, someone um, read the Christmas poem to them, okay? So again, once more, a shorter version of Clemency Moore's The Night Before Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled, all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. And what to my wondering eye should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet! on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. He had a broad face and a round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. All right, guys, so again, go to Seymour, click on the link, and review key vocabulary, and then read the poem on your own. It's good practice to develop rhythm and linking. So I hope you enjoyed the reading. I will be sharing another regular lesson this week. This was just a special event um, because it's Christmas and I felt like doing something special related to Christmas. But you'll have a regular lesson later this week on YouTube. And I encourage you to 
Follow me also on Instagram. Those of you who haven't joined me yet, I've been sharing short video clips on Instagram twice a week, so you can get more practice from me that way, okay? I thank you all for either joining me live or watching the recording, and I wanna take this opportunity also to say Merry Christmas to those celebrating, Happy Holidays to everyone, and um, I'm sure I'll have another opportunity, but just in case, I'll say it again now, I wish you all a very, very happy new year. I hope the coming year brings you wonderful joys, shared laughter, and I wish you all the very best. Marat, thank you, and take care. Edna, thank you, everyone. So happy holidays, happy new year, and get, go to the poem and practice, all right? Thanks, guys, and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Christina. Bye-bye. <laughs>